Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard Working Man. Today, it's all about towing safety. First, I'm gonna reinforce the frame and hitch unit, I guess, on my 2001 Chevy Silverado, because the hitch that I put on it was from a different model. I, it, I sort of messed up when I ordered it, and it was real close, but it was back a little further, so I had to put new holes in, and it sunk down a little bit. So I'm gonna get that back into position and try to reinforce it with some steel. And I tow heavy, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. Then I'm gonna get ready to go do a power washing job with my son, load some firewood that we gotta drop off for one of our roadside stands, but I gotta tow a trailer to do all that. And also, if you follow me on Facebook, part of the Facebook Marketplace find of the day was all this Unistrut. I'm gonna use that for an upcoming project, well, a bunch of upcoming projects, but they also gave me this table here which is gonna be perfect, I think, to put steel on and cut with the plasma cutter. So let's get this bumper off, get the hitch off, spare tire out, and see if we can sure up this frame. Speaking of Facebook Marketplace, I also picked up this massive jack that runs off a Black Hawk port of power. It'll go out to about the same length of that cylinder, and I think it'll lift a ton of weight. I saw that for $30, and I had to get it. For what? I don't know, to half? All right, guys, well, I don't think I'm gonna have to take that back bumper off after crawling under here. I just gotta get the hitch off this rusty old frame, which I put on and I knew I was taking it back off. I already got those bolts. I get those and then try to reinforce this frame. Ultimately, I need to do something to slow down the rust on this baby. I mean, I don't even know. It's been so hot and humid, so I'm not gonna complain because hopefully this rain will cool it down. I get the hitch off, I get a couple things done, and thunder, here it comes, a storm. Hey, you might hear this whirring in the background. I just picked up one of these off uh, Amazon. It's a little fan you hook on your belt and it blows up under your shirt. The jury's still out on it. Uh, crawling under a car, it's not the greatest, but I'll let you guys know what I think about this thing in the wood yard and just working outside in general. All right, guys, we are back. I got the spare tire out of the way, hitch out of the way, and underneath where I want to reinforce, I think I'm gonna use this. I think it's a C-channel, but I'm gonna have to cut it like this at about seven inches to go. So this will go to the top of the frame, and then I'll bolt through here on the one bolt, because where I had to move the bolt to, put it on a hole that was in the frame right on the edge of it, and it was a little weak. So this should reinforce it, not only along the whole frame, on the bottom but at the top corner where it should be strong and hopefully I can fit this in there good get a new hole drilled in this and then that part will be taken care of and then the most rear part I got to reinforce as well now to try and cut this I'm going to use the R Captain cut 55 it's a plasma cutter and if you follow the channel you know I'm not a welder I've never successfully cut with torches other than a little bit of practice and I've used this plasma cutter a little bit messing around, but we're gonna see what I can do on some real steel here today. I'm gonna clean it up for the ground because I learned that you have to have a good ground, which you should know anyways. And then we're gonna see if we can cut this off at an eight inch piece. I'm not real steady, so I'm gonna use a uh, square, I guess, to try to guide me so I get a nice cut. It doesn't have to be beautiful because no one's ever gonna see it, but I still want it to be nice. <laughs> Now, I don't know what kind of steel this is. It came in one of my Facebook Marketplace lot finds, so. Now, I am wearing shorts, which could be dumb. I don't know. I'm gonna start by just trying to go up and then see if I can. I did mark that with a square. I was gonna ride along the square, but I think having to turn these corners, it might be easier just to try to freehand it. So let's see what we can do.
Man, that's some thick steel there. I don't know if I'm I'm getting to where it won't spark. 242 touch, 55. <laughs> like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm you're learning with me. It's hot on the arm. I forgot I was filming. I just did this side and I did a lot better. I'm learning how to run this thing. I think probably starting on an angle where it's really thick in the corner probably isn't the best way to start, but we're gonna see what it can do. All right, here we go with the rookie level cut here, I think. I should be able to get this, hopefully. my table. It must be the duty cycle, because after I get this thing going, when I stop, I gotta wait a minute to let her go again. Pop this off. Ah! Man, that's thick. That thing should be about off. Oh yeah, just that first bad side cut that I started on. screwed myself up by doing that cut bad in the beginning. Ah, come on, there we go. Hmm. 
Now I would have to say, for my first time ever plasma cutting anything of substance and going around a corner, you can see how it's thicker in that corner. That's where I struggled the most. And I mean, I'm still pretty happy with that. And I have to cut one of these off anyway, so I'll cut the ugly one off. Those of you that know how to run plasma cutters and you just saw what I did there, what did I do right, what did I do wrong? I mean, I had to have been fairly right because it's cut off now. All right, guys, now I need to cut right through this thick spot so that I can leave this tall enough to make contact with the top of the frame. And then this will be on the bottom. We'll drill back through that. And then just two square tubing on the rear that I just got to drill. I already just cut them in half, 10 inch pieces. And let's see how this one goes. Definitely shouldn't be doing this in shorts. This is nice because I have this as a guide already. So I don't need to rely on my free handing, which was terrible. right there a little crooked we'll uh, knock the slag off and then bump that with the grinder now I cut that at an angle which is what I needed I mean for never having done this before I mean, other than a few practice thin pieces, I like it. So there it is. I mean, we've all seen the videos when welders use these things and they make it look effortless. I'm a guy that's not a welder, brand new to all this, and that thing still works pretty good. And I probably don't even have it set up correctly, to be honest. I got it at the highest power, just probably not the best, but it worked. All right, so just to sort of show you what we're doing here, you can see the rust, it's not great, but uh, this is where it was mounted before, right through that big hole, and it just wasn't sturdy enough. So, we're taking these pieces that we're cutting, they go all the way up to the top rail, drilling a new hole through them, now we're gonna have the support we need. All right, so this is what's going on the back to support it better. This will go inside the frame rail, and the carriage bolt and the carrier fit right inside here, so that'll be nice. And then up here, it's a grade eight bigger bolt that I put through just for a little more support. All right, guys, the hitch is on, but not the furthest forward bolts. I need to get longer ones. It took way longer than expected. As usual, I got called into work tonight, so I'm not gonna finish today, but I'll finish tomorrow when I get home from work in the morning. This little belt fan does work because I didn't think it was doing much and I took it off for a little bit and it was way worse. So they definitely help. Are they the most, I guess, work friendly? Not crawling under trucks. We'll see about cutting firewood, but it definitely lets you know when you're a little overweight because when you lean forward, you plug the fan. So that's a huge drawback. We need a belly guard on these things. So anyway, we'll bring you back tomorrow and hopefully finish this up and get our jobs done. All right, we got up to the property. Rachel got her mowing done, Nate got the house power wash. I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of the before and after at the end of this video, cause it's insane. The hitch is done, I think it's good. I'm gonna crawl under there and show you that. But I said this was about towing safer and the hitch is part of it, but 
This other thing I'm about to show you is something that's even cooler and I like it way more than I thought I would. So Gouda reached out to me, tire pressure monitor system. If you follow the channel, you know a few, probably a month or two ago, I had a tire blow on my gooseneck. That's no fun, it's not safe and none of that. I think it blew because the bearing got a little hot and blew that tire. This thing is so simple and if you have a dually without TPMS or you tow trailers, you need to get one of these. They're not expensive and they're just so easy. It tells you if you got a puncture, low pressure, high pressure, overheating, or a fast leakage. And all you do is plug this into power in your truck, hang it on the window however you want. There's my aftermarket backup camera, and there are all of my tire pressures. The six tires on the dually and the four on the trailer. Plug that in, and then depending on the kit you order, it comes pre-programmed. So F1 is the front left tire. You just screw this onto your valve stem, you can hear it beeping right now because it just went from pressure to zero. Well, you probably can't hear that, but I can. You screw that on, it's gonna connect and tell your tire pressure. If you drive a dually, you know checking those pressures is a pain and we don't all do it as much as we're supposed to, but with this, you don't ever have to do it again. So I still need to build an actual soft wash, pressure wash trailer. This is just temporary as Nate's getting started, but let me show you underneath the truck. I think it's gonna be so much better. So here on the back, I added the square tubing and drilled through it. So now that supports the frame as well. And then here I got that C channel and this hitch shouldn't move anymore. Like I said, it wasn't a perfect fit and it was getting a little bit tweaked. So we fixed that up. Oh. So the old Silverado should be towing safer than ever now with the hitch reinforced, the tire pressure monitors on, and I'm gonna need this trailer because I think I might be picking something up off Facebook Marketplace that I hope will fit on this and it's gonna be a huge improvement to the wood yard. Thanks for watching, hardworking man guys, and have a great day.